guys, today we're going to be doing the 3 looks 1 palette with the Menagerie Cosmetics uh, Courtship Palette. And I will show you what this looks like if you have not already seen it. So obviously this is not really my kind of color story at all, but like I said in my first impression video, I like the brand so much that I decided to buy this because I wanted to support them and help them out. So I still want to use the product, obviously, because I have it. And I kind of want to show you guys how to make a palette like this a bit more interesting if you want to really amp it up. So what I've kind of allowed myself to do is I am going to be pulling in shadows from other palettes or singles that I have to complete my looks with this palette. But I will make sure that these shadows that I do use are something that you guys probably already have in your collection. So. You know, that way, if you have this palette, you can probably recreate the looks that I end up doing. So for today's look, I think I want to pull in a black. So I have a black single here from Path McGrath. I got this in a holiday set and I never really used this, but I want to use this. And I found this when I was decluttering and I was like, you know what? This is a good time to bring in some things that I haven't used in a while. So I will be using a black together with this palette. And I think I also want to pull in some kind of a green eventually. So what I kind of have planned for today is I want to do a halo eye. So I'll be using probably these two shades right here along with the black in my crease. And then I want to use this one in the middle of my eye as well as the probably green on my lower lash line. I don't know what I want to do in my inner corner yet. I haven't really thought about that, but that could end up being anything. And, you know, might pull in some fun liners and stuff like that. So let's just have some fun. So I'm going to start off by priming my eyes with my MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre as always. Okay, so my eyes are obviously looking very different right now because I did decide to use a different primer on this eye and this is one that I got by Sorme. I got this sent to me by Octoly, so I do want to test this out before I like do my review and stuff, so just ignore whatever is happening on this eye because I don't want this video to be about the primer, but I still need to test out this primer before I do review it, so just whatever happens on this eye, just kind of don't think about that. So I'm going to start off by putting Caramelized, which is this color right here, and I'm going to put that all over my crease. So I'm just going to be using a small fluffy brush to just place this everywhere. And Caramelize is such a good name for the shadow, that's exactly what this looks like. Like it makes me think of some kind of a food, but I can't think of exactly what it is that I'm thinking of, but it makes me think of like creme brulee or something. And now I really want something sweet, but I don't have any in this room and I don't feel like going to get something. So that went on beautifully as expected. Next up, I'm going to do basically the exact same thing with Bon Bon, which is this brown shade down here. I am going to keep it a little bit lower down in my crease, but I'm still going to be putting it everywhere. Okay, so I think we are ready to go in with the black, so just take whatever black you have if you wanted to recreate something like that. I'm sure everybody has a pretty decent black in their collection. So I'm gonna take the black now and I'm going to use that to deepen up the inner and outer corner of my eye. And I've actually really been enjoying this BH Cosmetics brush. This is the one that came in this set and it's brush number 11. I don't know if they sell these separately, but this is really good. So I'm just going to start by packing this in my outer corner first. And also just blend it into the crease as I go. So my best advice on how to get edges blended when you're doing halo eyes is honestly just to use a smaller brush than you think you should use because it just makes life so much easier and that's probably my tip that I have for anybody with anything when it comes to eyeshadow. Just use smaller brushes, you know? I know it's a pain in the ass to have to go out and buy smaller brushes, but it just makes the world of difference. Especially if you're trying to be more precise and do more intricate looks, it just makes life so much easier. So I have quite a lot of thoughts about that other primer and I don't really want to get into it too much, but so far I'm not loving it, not gonna lie. Alright, so I think we are ready for the halo part now, and for that I'm going to use Keepsake. Even though this shadow right here is the most beautiful thing in the world, I'm still going to use the gold because that just kind of goes better with this look. So I'm going to take that on a small flat brush and I'm going to spray that with some Fix Plus. And then I'm just going to place that right in the middle here. So 
So as you can see, I'm being very precise with this and I'm placing it basically right in the middle where I didn't have any shadow. And then I'm slowly going to work on blending out the edges here. I'm probably going to go back in with the black after just to make sure that everything is looking blended, but I don't want this to get too out of hand, if you know what I mean. And I'm also gently just tapping a little bit of it into my crease so that when I open my eyes, you can see a bit of sparkle up there, and I just think that looks really pretty. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like very structured halo eyes on myself. You know how when people cut their crease when they're doing a halo eye and they're doing like this very graphic line on top? I just, I don't feel like that really suits my eye shape, so I've never really played around with it. I definitely prefer softer halo eyes, plus they're also just easier to do, you know? Alright, so like I said, I'm going to go back in with a bit more of that black now and just make sure that the edges are looking as black and intense as they can be and that all of the blends are looking nice. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is for my lower lash line, I'm going to go into my uh, Blush Tribe and Polina palette and I'm going to take one of the green shades in here. And the one that I want to use is the darker green, which is called Sigge, which is the name of her dog. So I'm going to take that shadow and I'm going to basically smoke that out on my lower lash line. Just to bring a bit of color into this look because I feel like something is definitely missing, you know. So I'm really going to smoke this out and I'm going to apply quite a bit of this. And I'm also just going to take a fluffy brush with a bit more of that shadow on it, but I'm going to tap that off and then I'm going to make sure that everything is looking blended and really buffed out. And don't be afraid to pull the shadow on your lower lash line down more than you think you should because honestly, I feel like you really can't blow out your lower lash line too much because it just makes it look cool and grungy, you know? Like I used to always be scared of doing that, but I find that every time I blow it out more than I think I should, it just ends up looking really cool. And I'm then just wiping off my brush and I'm just going to tap over the edges here to make sure that the outer corners are kind of mixed together but not too much. And then for my inner corner, I'm going to use a duochrome green, which you can obviously use whatever you want in your inner corner. You don't need to use this, but this is my Naked Cosmetics highlighting palette. So I'm going to take this green shadow right here. Let me see if I can give you a finger swatch, finger swatch, finger swatch. Whoa. So what you can see it's just got a very very nice kind of green gold shift so I feel like those will go really nicely together and I'm just going to pop that right in here. And in my waterline I have the perfect pencil and you guys can probably guess it but this is Teaspoon by Colourpop so I'm going to pop this in here I'm going to do some liner mascara off camera and then I will be right back. Alright, so this is going to be the eye look all complete. I think this turned out really pretty. Uh, I do think I want to kind of spice it up a bit more with the lipstick though. So I'm going to go in with a bit of a red, but it's more of a softer kind of watermelon red, but on the darker side. And this is Rendezvous by Ofra. So I'm going to put this on. I just like this because I feel like it matches my hair right now since it's a bit faded. So this is perfect. So I'm going to put this on and then I think we are going to be done with look number one. So this is going to be look number one all complete. I think for one of my next looks, I do want to pull in some kind of a blue because I feel like blue would go really nicely with this color story, especially that other shimmer because I need to use that again. So yeah, that is going to be it for look number one. Let's just move into look number two. All right, it is time for the second look with the Menagerie. Why am I saying what I'm using? Obviously, you've already seen this because you're like a third of the way into this video. I don't know what I'm doing. But for today's look, I think I want to pull in a shimmer, whereas in the first look, I pulled in a matte. I think I think I pulled in a matte. I think I pulled in a glitter as well. I really don't remember. It's been like four days. <laughs> but for today's look, I am going to pull in my Pinky Rose Cosmetics Exotic Pe Peacock Palette. And the shade that I want to use today is going to be Provocative, which is a green shimmer. And I just think this is so, so, so beautiful. And I think it's going to go really nicely with these other shades in this palette. So I think what I want to start with is that I want to take Tutu and I want to put that into my crease. And then I'm going to go into Serenade and I'm going to use that to deepen it up. So that is going to be the plan to start off. I haven't really thought any further than that. And I also want to use the green. I think I want to use the green on the lid. We'll see what happens. So let me just find a clean brush, which I don't think I have any left because they're all dirty still. I really need to wash my brushes 
And I'm just going to use this as my transition shade. So I will not be doing anything fancy, I'm basically just putting this into my crease. Alright, now that I have this shade down, I'm next gonna take Serenade, and like I said, I'm going to use this to deepen up the crease with, so not be doing anything fancy, I'll just be starting on the outer corner and then bringing the shadow in. So I'm first gonna go in and just pack this on out here. And when I have this down, I'm just gonna take that same brush and start using small circular motions and just bring this through my crease. So that was super easy and what I kind of had in mind was that I wanted to put the green on my lid but now I kind of feel like I want to do the gold on the lid and then put the green on my lower lash line so I think I'm going to stick to that plan but I also think I want to cut my crease first before I do that because this gold is not as pigmented as the other shimmer in this palette so I'd like to have something a bit tacky down and I also want this to be more of a structured look so I'm going to take my P. Louise base and do a half cut crease and then when I've done that I will be right back. So I, it literally just dawned on me that I did the exact same thing in my first look by using the green on the lower lash line. So we're not going to be doing that today. I guess we're going to do blue instead or something like that. I don't know what is going on with me today. My memory is just like poof. But I mean, really, that's every day for me because my memory sucks. But at least I caught it before it was too late because I would have been embarrassed if I did two looks with green on my lower lash line in this video. So... Thank God for me remembering. So I guess what I'll do instead is actually let's just go in with this gold. So <laughs> let's just go in with keepsake now and I'm going to spray that and then I'm going to put that all over where I put my cut crease. So this formula is definitely a lot crumblier than the other one in here. I mean it's still beautiful but I think this is the same formula as the one that's in the Feral palette which I was having a little bit of a hard time working with. But as you can see, once you get this on the eyelid, like it is stunning. It just has a little bit more fallout. And now I'm wishing I used a glitter glue with this, but I don't really want to go in and put glitter glue on top of the shadow and then put more shadow on top. I don't like having a bunch of layers on my eyelid. I find it to be a little bit uncomfortable. So we're just gonna live with this today and hopefully I'll be able to remove that fallout, but it seems to just kind of fall off my face, so. It's not too big of a deal. And I mean, that shade is stunning still. Oh, that's really pretty. All right, so before I do anything else, now I'm gonna go back into Serenade, which was the dark kind of brown shade. I guess it's more of a dark burgundy? Dark maroon? Something like that, I don't know. But I'm gonna go in with a bit more of that and just make sure that the blend between the shimmer and the matte here is looking good. And I'm just packing more of this on the outer corner just to make it a little bit deeper than everything else. And then I'm just going to gently blend this into the shimmer on the lid. Sort of creating a bit of a diagonal line on the outside here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to dip into Besties because I just want a little bit of this shadow. I just think it's so beautiful. So I'm going to put a little bit of that just right on the outer edge of where I put down that gold. Just to sort of mix these in together a bit more. And just, I just oh, I love this shadow so much. That is so beautiful. Yeah, I feel like this really helped with the blend and just looks more put together, you know. This is just stunning. So now I want to go in with a blue on my lower lash line. What do I want to do? I kind of want to use a dark blue and I kind of want to use a shimmery blue. So, I mean, I feel like since I have this palette here anyway, I might as well just go in with this one. And this is called Enchanted. Enchanted? Enchanted, right? I don't know, but we're gonna go in with that. And I'm just going to run that all the way across here, I think. And just to make this pop even more, I'm gonna use my, uh, what is this called? Lime Crime Diamond Dew Glitter Drops. And I'm gonna put a bit of this just in the inner part of my lower lash line here. And again, I'm going to use a brush just so I can be a bit more precise. And I'm just going to layer that right over here. Oh my God, that's so pretty. Now 
And now for my waterline, I think I'm gonna find something dark blue and then I'm gonna put on some liner and mascara and I think that is going to sum this up. Let me just find something for my waterline. I think I'm gonna use this. This is Urban Decay's Goddess and it's a very, very dark metallic blue. Actually, you know what, I take that back because I just swatched it and it almost looks like it's got a bit of a black undertone. I want something a little bit brighter, so maybe I should use, should I just go with this one? Should I just be crazy? I kind of want to use, the struggle is so real every day, I swear to God, it's so hard to choose. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go with my LA Girl liner because I just, I like this so much and I really like to match my bottom lash line with the color that I have in my waterline. So I'm gonna put this on, do some liner and mascara and then I will be right back. Okay, so this is the completed eye look. I love this. I think this looks so cute. I just feel really pretty, you know? I love that feeling. So for lipstick, I kinda wanna go with something that's similar in tone to what I have in a crease. So I was kinda thinking this one, I don't know how this is going to look, but this is <laughs> by Ofra. So I'm gonna try to put this on. I don't know if this is going to be like a good match, but we're gonna try it because I don't think I've used this one. So let's try this. It might be a little bit too peachy, too light, but I'm gonna just put on the rest and then we'll see how it looks. So I majorly overlined my bottom lips and I really don't like that look, so I had to really overlay my top lip too and yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I feel about this with the eye look. I mean, I think it's fine, but I feel like I can do better. And like I said, I don't like the application here, so I think I'm going to take this off and find something else. I'm just like not 100% feeling it. Like it doesn't look bad or anything. It's just not really what I had in mind. So let me try to find something else and then I'll be right back. So I have another one that I kind of want to try and this is the Maybelline Super Stay Ink in Ruler. And this is more of like a... I don't know, it's got a bit more of a reddish undertone than the other one that I tried. So I feel like this is more similar to like my crease color and that shiny color. So. Let me just try this and see if that looks any better. I know my, my descriptions today are just not very on point, but sometimes we just have day, days like that. Sometimes we can't even talk, so. <sighs> okay, so this is more the undertone that I was looking for. It's a little bit bright, but I think I'm just going to leave it because I don't feel like taking this off again because that's going to be a pain in the ass. So we're just gonna call this look too. Like I said, I don't think the lipstick is a perfect match. I don't really think I have a perfect match to be honest. What I really wanted was a lipstick that was like in the same as this shade, but I feel like the shade is not as vibrant on my eyes as it is in the pan. So yeah, I don't know if I really have a lipstick that would be perfect with this, but we're just gonna leave it with this. And so, like I said, this is going to be look number two. I hope you enjoyed my very rambly look today. I don't know what's happening with me, but hopefully the next look will have me being a little bit more human and <laughs> have my brain working a bit better. But yeah, um, I will see you in a little bit for look number three. <laughs> It's time for the third look and today I think I want to keep it like fairly simple because I don't want to spend forever on my makeup because I have somewhere to go after this. So today for the color that I want to bring in is I want to use a purple and the purple that I'm going to use is going to be from the Jeffree Star Alien palette because this purple right here is probably the best purple that I have in my collection. So I don't know if I want to pull in anything else. I don't think I do. So I'm first going to start by just priming my eyes as usual. Probably should have done that before hitting record, but sometimes you just forget. And I'm first going to start off by taking Tutu in the Menagerie palettes, and I'm going to put that into my crease as my transition shade because the purple in the Jeffree Star palette just performs a lot better when you have something to blend it into. So I could either do this or I could also go in and just set my primer, but I feel like if I'm going to set it with something anyway, I might as well just use a transition shade. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to use a big fluffy brush and just kind of fluff this into my crease.
Alright, so next I'm going to go into the Jeffree Star palette and I'm going to use the purple. Obviously, if you wanted to recreate anything similar, any purple is going to work, but this is just my favorite purple, so this is the one that I'm going to use. And I think this is going to be the only shade that I'm going to pull in from a different palette. I have not yet decided, but I think next, after I've put this on my lips, I'm going to go in with Besties, which is that beautiful kind of dual chromy shade in the Menagerie palette. So that's going to be the plan, but we'll see what happens when I get to that point. So. I'm just going to use this purple now to deepen up this crease with, as well as my outer corners. And my best advice when trying to blend out a purple is really just to take your time with it, because some purples are a little bit harder to blend out than others, but in general, I feel like purple is just a hard color to work with, so, you know, just take your time if you want it to be nice and blended, and it'll usually turn out okay in the end if the purple is a decent purple. I'm also going to take this purple and bring it down to my lower lash line, and I'm going to pull this all the way across, because like I said, I do want this to be a fairly simple look without using too many shadows. And I'm then taking the fluffier brush that I use in my crease and I'm going to start to just buff this out a little bit just to make sure that the outer corners and stuff are looking good. And then after that I'm going to go back in with that tutu shade which was the transition shade and I'm going to run this right below where I put down this purple. So I'm now taking tutu on that same brush and I'm basically just going to run this right over all of the purple that I have both underneath my eye as well as in my crease to just make sure that that transition is looking nice too. So I think I might pull in a bit of black after I put down the next shade, but I'm first going to go in with Besties, which is this one right here. And I'm basically going to put that all over my lid. So let's just go in with this now and see how this is looking. God, I just love this shadow so much. I don't think I will ever get sick of this. So I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of room in my inner corner just so I have room for a inner corner highlight. And I'm just fading this out into my outer corner. I don't know if I want to go in and deepen this up more, but I think I am going to. But let's just see how this looks when it's all said and done here. Because I definitely could just leave it like this too and just go in with a bit more of that purple. So as you can see, I'm using a bit of a fluffier brush because I don't want this to look like a cut crease. So I'm kind of blending it up into my crease a little bit as well because I like the look of having a little bit of shimmer just in my crease. I think that just adds a bit of an extra pop. And it just makes the look look a little bit less structured, which is not always what I'm going for. And I love how transformative the shadow is. Like you could put this with so many different things and you can see it's now pulling more pink than it was in the first look that I did where I paired it with the kind of more brown shades and it definitely pulled more brown and gold and now it's just pulling a lot more pink. I think this is so beautiful. So I actually don't think I want to use any black. I'm just going to take a bit more of that purple on the same brush now and just make sure that the blend out here is looking the way that I want it to be. And I can also use this purple to sort of deepen up the outer corner a bit more. So I love how this is looking. I think this is so pretty. So for my inner corner, I think I'm just going to use the gold in this palette. So I'm going to go in with Keepsake, which is this one. And I'm just going to pop that where I don't have any shadow. So I think this is going to be all I wanted to do for shadows. I do need to put something in my waterline though, so I think I'm going to just do a purple. So maybe I'll do this one by Urban Decay. This is Delirious. So I'm going to put that in my waterline, then I'm going to do some liner and mascara, and I will be back and we can put on a lipstick and then talk a little bit more about this palette. I'll do my final review and then we will sum up this video. So I will be right back.
All right, so this is the eyes all done. I think this came out so pretty. I just, I love these tones together so much. So for lips, I kind of want to go with the same theme and go with something a little bit pinky purple. So for lip liner, I'm going to use Oh Snap by ColourPop. And then on top, I'm going to put this All My Gloss, which is called Fairy. And I think that these two are going to go pretty nice together, but we'll find out and see if I'm right. So I really like this. It didn't turn out as purpley as I was hoping, but I guess that's because the lip liner is a little bit lighter than it looks to be in the tube. So I like that the gloss has a bit of a gold shimmer in it. I think that really ties into the eye. So yeah, that's going to be the end of the looks in this video. Now let's talk a bit more about this palette. So let me scooch over a little bit. So honestly, I don't really have much to say about this except that the only shadow that I find to be a little bit tricky to work with is the gold. So this one right here, uh, it's not the same formula as this one. This one is more on the crumbly side. Maybe it's because it's a little bit softer, but I find it a bit harder to work with. It reminds me more of the uh, shimmer shade in the Feral palette, which don't get me wrong, it's absolutely beautiful. But I feel like this shadow is going to perform a lot better if you use a glitter glue underneath, which you guys know I don't like using glitter glues. So for me, this shadow is a little bit tricky to work with, but that's not to say it's not a good shadow at all because it's absolutely stunning. And that is just me being a little bit nitpicky. But Menagerie has my favorite matte formula of all time, I'm pretty sure. I absolutely love the mattes in this little palette. I think they are so good. And in general, I would 155% recommend this palette to anybody who's thinking about picking this up because I think the quality of this is amazing. I think the packaging is amazing. I love how they have some weight to them. All of the Menagerie palettes are kind of heavy and that makes them feel more luxurious and I really like that about them. So yeah, I guess that is going to really sum up my video. I didn't have a lot to say about this palette. Again, it does only have six shades, so you know, there's only so much you can really say about every shade in the palette, except that I think this palette is amazing. I would highly recommend it. I think it's beautiful. I think the shadows perform really well. I have not had any wear problems at all with any of them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the looks that I came up with. I know they were on the neutral side, but I still had fun being able to pull in from other palettes within a three looks one palette video. So if that is something you wanna see more of, let me know and I can absolutely do that. And I can make sure that I use shadows that are pretty common in everyone's collections. I tried to do that this time by using a blue and a green and a purple because those are pretty, you know, normal colors that most people do have. So yeah, let me know what you think about this format. It's not going to become a norm. I'm not going to do that in every three looks one palette that I do, but if it's a palette like this that a lot of people are maybe requesting me to review, then I definitely could see myself doing this again in the future. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.